In this lesson, I'm gonna cover the number one key to hitting more deadly returns on the doubles court. So when you go out and practice, if you're a doubles player, you can practice hitting your returns with more spin. You can practice hitting your returns with more pace, so hitting them faster through the court. Uh, you can work on your direction, which might be hitting down the line more often or hitting more of a cross court angle. You can practice returning different heights. So you can practice a lob return. You can practice hitting low over the middle. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about why uh, none of those in my mind are the most important thing uh, for returning in doubles. Uh, I just finished my new return strategy ebook, which I'll link to below and you can purchase. Um, but what I noticed when I wrote this ebook, and it's over uh, 70 pages with images and graphics and uh, videos and all sorts of things like that. Um, what I noticed was a central theme to good return strategy and doubles. And that key to hitting more deadly returns is your court position. So if you can practice taking your returns earlier, then everything else is going to become a lot easier in terms of return strategy. So the earlier you can take it, the more time you take away from the opponent. So I'm going to go through three different points here uh, from the Pro Tour and show you uh, why taking the return early and adjusting your court position to be a little bit further forward uh, is so effective in doubles. So this first point, Marcelo Arevalo is returning against a Neil Skupski serve, and you can see he steps forward to take this return early. So he... For, for club level doubles, this is not that early of a return, but for ATP level, um, especially against a first serve, to take this just behind the baseline is a pretty early strike here. So he hits this backhand return down the line, taking it early, and Neil Skubski is hitting an off-balance forehand volley from behind the service line that Roger is able to go through the middle and poach on and end the point, uh, forcing an error. So if Arevalo had taken this return from, say, um, somewhere back here, that ball would have a lot further to travel. And what would happen is instead of Skubski having this off-balance forehand volley from here, he would have had more time to get forward and had a volley maybe from somewhere around here, around his maybe hip level instead. And he would have been able to hit a much stronger forehand volley back to a Ravelo at the baseline. And then he would have been able to push forward uh, and been in a more offensive position. But because a Ravelo hit this return so early, Skubski didn't have time to get over there for that forehand volley. He pops it up and Roger is able to end the point. So taking away that time didn't allow the server to get in position. So we're going to look at one more here from Arevalo against Skubski. And this one is a second serve. So second serves especially, you want to be adjusting your position, moving forward as much as you can. And Arevalo does that here. You can see he's starting just behind the baseline. And Skubski has a second serve, which Arevalo takes from inside the baseline here. So you can see he's making contact inside the baseline. And what this is going to do is a couple of things. Um, because you're taking it so early, you're giving the server's partner at the net almost zero time to react. They're not going to be able to read this return and poach off of it as easily. So if you're taking it early, you don't even have to hit it as hard. You don't have to hit it uh, quite as solid. You can get your direction a little bit wrong, but this net player doesn't have as much time because you've stepped forward into the court. So this ball goes kind of just right at that middle net strap, which is a ball that uh, Wesley Kuhlhoff here at the net oftentimes would be poaching on, especially against a first serve. But instead, uh, because Arevalo took it so early, he doesn't have time to do that. Skubski ends up with a backhand that is kind of rushed because Arevalo took it early. Um, and he tries to take this down the line since you can see Roger pinched a little bit there and recovered and puts this forehand volley away through the middle there. Uh, so we're going to look at one more here from the women's tour. 
Um, this is going to be a little more indicative of what you can do at the club level uh, and what you really should be practicing um, when you're out there on the doubles court, whether it's a practice match or um, or uh, just in practice in general. So this is Demi Shores returning here, and Sonia Mirza is serving. And you can see Demi is probably one of the best on tour at this. So she starts from behind the baseline, and she steps forward and takes this from well inside the baseline. And she doesn't even hit that good of a return it's high over the net, which typically a net player would be able to poach on, but she takes it so early that there's just no time to poach again. Uh, it lands just past the service line, so not a super effective return um, in terms of depth, but because she took it so early, she's able to follow this into the net and get into an offensive position against a Mirza backhand. And another big key here is because she's taking it early again, um, it doesn't have a ton of pace, but because Mirza doesn't have much time, she has to hit a backhand here. Now, if if Demi had taken it from behind the baseline, for example, this ball would have taken a lot longer to travel here, and Mirza probably is able to run around and hit a forehand, which is a position you do not want her in. So instead, she's hitting a backhand from behind the baseline here, uh, which gets Demi and her partner Des in a much more offensive position. So there's so many benefits to taking the return early. So this is something I really want you to focus on more. Um, try it in your practice matches. Try it when you go out and practice with your doubles partner. See if you can work on hitting these returns from somewhere inside the baseline. Uh, and you're probably starting out going to miss a few more returns, but if you can get good at it, it's going to be much more uh, effective in terms of winning return points. So that's the number one key, I think, for good return strategy in doubles. Uh, thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll talk to you in the next video. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Double Strategy Newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players, all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.